Welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. I am Andy Walker. I'm Shankar Others. And we're <laughs> over the top today. Yes, because we're talking about networking. <laughs> networking. Yes. Uh, and I have to say that you have to in- inject a certain amount of enthusiasm to networking because it can be a little dull. A little dull. But we have to tell you all the components you need to set up your own home network. Uh, plus um, useful tips and tricks. Mm-hmm. Sean's going to impart his wisdom. Yeah, we've talked about wireless security and things like that, but we've never really gone into the basics of that's true. what you need to get it set up in the first place. Well, that's what we're going to do today. First, a message from our sponsor, and then we'll get right into it. This is a llama. It carries luggage. This is a burrito. It is lunch. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It makes screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencasting tool is not woolly or made of beans? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. So networking. Yes. Yay. Isn't it exciting? Da, 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 da. So okay, so who, why, networks, why? Why? Well, why? let me tell you, Andy. I'll tell you why. Why? Because you have possibly more than one computer That's in your house. Uh, possibly you have a television that you want to send your MP3s and your videos to. Put a couple episodes of Lab Rats up here, stream them from your computer. All of the lab episodes of Lab Rats. Or per, yeah, all of them, yeah. And perhaps you uh, want to put uh, a hard drive on your network so that anyone can share to and from that hard drive. You know what I want to do? You know why I like my network? Because I can plug my TiVo directly into my network and mm-hmm. it can you know, talk to the internet that way. Right, that's right. that's pretty much the main reason, is there's a ton of devices that are out there that make use of home networking right. technology, either to connect to the outside world or to talk to other machines in the household. Right. So I get a, buy a big network, and I bring it in, and like, here, here's my network? Yeah, just back the truck up to your uh, front door. <laughs> What's upon a time that was true? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now it's a little box. It's a little box. So you've got... Um, this is called a router. It's a broadband sharing router, mm-hmm. right? So you've got a DSL connection in your home, mm-hmm. or you've got a cable okay. modem in your home. And uh, we'll assume that uh, for people that don't know what a home network is, you've probably got that broadband connection hooked directly to one computer in the household. Right. And uh, that's the way it was done for a long time. But as soon as you want to add another device to that home network or connect one computer to the other computer, you need something that will be able to share the information back and forth. Right. And that's where this comes in. So you've got uh, this router here, and it's got a port in here that you plug your uh, DSL or your cable into. So the blue thingy here, that's for your wide area network. That's your broadband. The The WAN. The WAN. The WAN. WAN. And you've also got ports typically for the LAN. LAN. And that's the local area network. network. And this will depend on whether or not you've gotten yourself an access point or a router. Technically, you want a router if you want to plug devices directly into it. An access point will just take that connection and share it wirelessly okay. inside your house. Right. So if you do have a computer that you is right beside the modem and you want to connect hardwired to it, you would want one of these. Right. Um, now, these are cheap, 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 right? These like... are, yeah, cheaper, cheaper and cheaper all the time. This one right here is a, an 11N router, which is a bit more expensive, but if you're looking at... Uh, some of the earlier generations, which are still perfectly fine. You're talking maybe $40, $50 to get started on a cheap one if you want something with a little bit more capabilities, a little bit higher. Right, okay. So now is it time to talk about A, B, C, D, N? Yes, it's it's confusing. It's alphabet soup is what it is. Um, You've got a networking standard called 802.11. Right. And that was set by the IEEE, or the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Ooh. And 802.11n is needlessly cryptic. All it is is their standard right. number. So 802.11 refers to wireless network. Wireless networking, or Wi-Fi, wireless oh. fidelity. Yeah, wireless fidelity. Yeah, that was uh, something they... Uh, it wasn't the IEEE that came up with that, I don't believe, but they. it was sort of adopted by the industry to sort of soften up the whole thing. Because 802.11, what does it mean? Wi-Fi makes a little bit more sense. Right. Um, so there's different types there's of 802.11, different right? different types. Right, and the first one that came out into the general marketplace was 802.11b. Right. And uh, that was 11 Not megabits a, per second. No, B. A came out later. <laughs> Strange. Um, those, those wacky guys at IEEE. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I think they may have been working on A for a while and just B beat it to the beat punch. It to the maybe. So um, 11b were the first generation that came out. You don't see many of them on the market anymore mm-hmm. to, to buy, but if you have 11b, you're Except guaranteed... 
at the Stratosphere Hotel in Las Vegas. Yeah, we, we uh, suffered through that. We had to find another place to upload our episodes when we were CS because the, the connection there was so slow. Right. And it was 11 megabits per second shared among all, all the users yeah, of the hotel. I know, it's crazy. Which was next to nothing. I know. All right, so, so B came first. B yeah. was the first one. A came later. It was used in a different part of the radio spectrum. It didn't really right. last long. It's a little faster, but meh. Yeah, it, it's still going, but it's mostly business at Most this business. point. Okay, right. Right. Um, and because it used a higher um, radio spectrum to transmit data back and forth, it actually had a shorter range. Right. Because, you know, with, with a faster wave, as soon as you hit a wall, it just... Yeah, it dies. It yeah. dies. So that was in the 5 gigahertz range. And B was in 2.4 gigahertz, 2.4. which is where Bluetooth is, mm -hmm. it's where your garage door opener is, where some of your cordless phones are. It's mm -hmm. kind of what they call the ISM band, or the Industrial Scientific and Medical Band. Pretty yes. Good, huh? So you have a lot of stuff in there. So there's yeah. technically some interference. Most of these products do a fairly good job of not being interfered with by Bluetooth or the microwave or whatever, unless you're like right next to the, the transmitter. So you put two transmitters right next to each other, then you're going to have problems. But right. otherwise, they play pretty nice most of the time. Now, the great savior of Wi-Fi was 802.11G. G. And we'll tell you why. And, and those are the majority of the products you'll still find out there and the ones that are nice and cheap these days. 11G is a successor to B. So it runs in the same uh, bandwidth, mm -hmm. so 2.4 uh, gigahertz. Yeah. It talks backwards to, to B. 11B, yeah. so they're cross-compatible, right. although they'll be cross-compatible at the lower speed of uh, 11 megabits that B uses. Right. And um, it extends the range a little bit, right? Yeah, so right. Um, you it's get faster. faster. How fast is it? It's 54, it's 54 megabits. megabits per second. Right? Yeah, and that was what A was as well, but it does it in the, the other in the 2 .4 radio spectrum. Range, right. right. Okay. And G's really become the universal standard. You know, mm -hmm. It really is, if you're going to go and buy a laptop today and, and a home network that's affordably priced, it's 802.11G. That's what you're going to mm -hmm. get. Pretty much. But, but we have a new technology on the horizon, folks. And it's 802.11n, and you may have seen this when you've been going out into the stores. 11n technology. N for new? <clears throat> N for new. And uh, Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and uh, what you'll see actually is, oh, I'm going to grab my water yeah. back here. N is really, really important, I think, because one of the biggest things that people are trying to achieve inside of the home not only is penetration through walls and through the entire home, so you want to extend the range, but also a lot of throughput. So 802.11n offers... I think mm -hmm. it's 300 megabits per second potentially, correct? Potentially. So, I mean, you know what I get in the real world? You're going to get about half that. Right. That means you can get 150 megabits per second mm -hmm. wirelessly you know, throughout the home. And that means mm -hmm. you can push video. And that's the magic word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 11G was just good enough to pu start pushing video. But if you did anything else on that network at yeah. the time, yeah. just forget Mom's it. Mom's email would die. The kids' email yeah, would so die. So if you have multiple streams of video, so you can have that video running from the TV to your computer or from the computer to the TV, really, and then you can have a Skype call going on somewhere else, and it's not really affecting it that much. Right. So, yes, uh, but here's the problem with 11N. It's not finalized yet. I know. Now, this is one of the frustrating things about <coughs> the guys at IEEE is, and the people that make these things, they can't make up their mind. Yeah. They want to do it this way, and these guys want to do it that way, and it takes, yeah. well, how long has it been in development for? Three years? Longer than longer Vista. Than Oh my God, that's a long no, time. It's, it's, it's not been that long, but you know the, the problem is that uh, you've got all of these manufacturers that are involved in the whole process, uh, the manufacturers of the chipsets and the, the technology, and they're all fighting for what they want to be in that final specification. Yeah. And uh, some of the companies are going like, no, that's just not going to work. It's going to interfere with this and that. But finally, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting there. Now. We, I mean, you, can, yeah. you can buy what they call pre n right now. Yeah, you can buy... Pre-N was the first one that came out. That's yeah. what Belkin called Belton, it. Belkin, yeah. And the newest generation of products are 11N draft. So it's a draft specification. So okay. this is what they think it's going to be. Um, they're still fighting it, so things could change. Um, and, and theoretically, each, each of these has firmware that's in flash memory, mm -hmm. and you can theoretically flash upgrade it to the newest specification. Right. Unless they change something on the hardware. Right. And if they do that, then you have to throw this out and... Buy a new one. Buy a new one, unfortunately. Okay. So when you're buying 11N products right now, you're really taking a risk. You're, you're hoping that the people that are involved in this negotiation know what they're talking about and that they're getting it done. Right. So, okay, so let's say that we go out and we buy a draft N router. Mm -hmm. And now what else do we need? In the, so we're going to plug all of our computers into wi wired, mm -hmm. and the laptops are going to talk to this wirelessly. So we're going to get 150 megabits per second or 300 megabits per second? If you have N at both ends, yes. 
So the nice Which, thing about N yeah. is it is designed, in theory, to talk with 11B and 11G products. So it's just another ramp oh, up from right. that same same spectrum, same um, same uh, frequency. So, but if yeah. your laptop is built in 802.11B or G, it will talk to the N router at B or G speeds. Right, so right. either 11 or 54. So you're not going to get the full on N experience until your laptop no, no, no. Yeah. is a new radio. But here's the problem with N. Uh oh. Uh, another problem with N, and I said, if you really don't have to buy something at that speed yet, you might want to wait a little bit until it's getting closer no. to final release, which no. is looking like it's going to be no. April 2008. Ugh. But All hopefully, right. hopefully later on in the year, the the draft spec products that are released later in 2007 mm -hmm. will be close enough. The problem is, is that these products don't talk to each other necessarily. So you've got a Linksys product, and you could have a D-Link product. And they might not really talk uh, well right. to each other. Because the specification is not finalized. It's not finalized, and there's interoperability issues because of the hardware. There's two chipsets out there. There's one from Ergo and one from Atheros, and they don't necessarily talk well to each other. Mm -hmm. But worse, it gets worse. These products don't necessarily talk to your older 11G or 11B products properly. All right. So this is a great big bust, right? It, this is a great big bust. For you the know time what? being, For until the these time. guys get, their organi get, get organized, it's a big pain in the butt. Right. So I would say don't even go near N at this point. Don't go near it. Don't do it. You know what? You can go near N, but you got to do one thing. Match your brands. Mm -hmm. So get the 11N router okay. and the same uh, manufacturer's 11N card. So if you've got a, a wireless notebook, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you know, a notebook that has wireless built yeah. into it, yeah. if it'll hook up to this, fine. If you don't have one with wireless on board, you can add it, either right. with a PC card slot or a USB card, if you're going to buy one of these, yeah. buy the same brand. Right, makes sense. Okay, all right, good tip. All right, what else do we need? Um, or should we talk about that after the break? Um, well, that's pretty much it for what, what else you need. Um, you might want to double check if you're buying product, say, the new Apple TV, which is designed to stream wirelessly yeah. um, to your television, just to make sure that it works with the networking products that you already have. Or if you're going out to buy the network to match that to product, that they will talk together. Right. Or at the very least, ask if you can bring it back. If it doesn't work, you get it home and it doesn't work, just ask if you can bring it back and exchange it for one that will. There you go. All right, let's take a break, and when we come back, final thoughts. And do we have any pictures? We do have some pictures have some coming pictures up. pictures, too. All right. Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencasting product is not woolly or made of beans. Is it A, a llama, B, a burrito, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. So what happened to 802.11J? Uh, the J is being used in Japan, apparently. <laughs> uh, most of the... Uh, the uh, different variations there alphabetically are already taken for 802.11, and some of them are reserved so they can't be used like 11x, for example, uh -huh. because 11x is used as a generic term for anything that is anything that 802 is. 11. Yeah. And there's a few others. I think 11o is reserved and not unusable. But yeah, a lot of them have been taken at this point. Cool. All right. What's the silver thing here? The silver right thing. Um, this is one of the reasons why you might want a network hard drive. This is or, sorry, a network in your system. It's yeah. a network hard drive, network attached storage. Um, it's basically a hard drive that has a networking port built into it Ooh. here. So you can put this on the network, share it with all of the computers on there, set up user accounts to, to save you your data. You can keep all of your, your pictures. On you can keep all your pictures, all of your MP3s, all of your video files. Right. You can back up your computer to something like this. Um, and yeah, access it from anywhere on the network. So if you want to share something between your desktop machine and your notebook, just throw it on here. Awesome. Cool. So that's one other reason might really want to put an network in there. Awesome. Okay, great. And let's see some pictures. We've got pictures. Pictures of cats? Oh, no. Oh, this is uh, Chris from Italy. He's Italian, though, huh? He's Italian, yeah. And uh, he's looking cool picture. a little bit looks, uh, He looks Photoshopped. Processed. Yes, but very cool. Very cool, Chris. Thanks for mm -hmm. sending that in. What else? Oh, and, and here we have uh, Barry from Birmingham in the UK. Birmingham. Birmingham. Barry, Birmingham. 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 That's a... Birmingham. Birmingham. All right. All right. Barry from Birmingham. And he's taking a picture with his... With his Canon. Canon. Canon camera. Very good. Cool. Thank you, Barry. 
From Birmingham. Birmingham. Is that it? Birmingham. Birmingham. Oh, please don't write in. I think we're losing some fans. <laughs> we lose fans every time uh, we open our mouths. No, no, no. Well, that is another fabulous edition of your favorite number one podcast based on the Andy Walker Podcasting Index. Number one podcast in Etobicoke. Canada, yes. All right, maybe it is. Anyway, thank you for <laughs> tuning in this week. We, uh, I hear they're filming another one just up the uh, street from here. Really? Really popular. What's it called? They got a crew. They got a, they yeah. got a deli cart. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have craft service. All right, well, that's it for us. Thank you for tuning in, for downloading this this week uh, on your network or on your broadband connection. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is Biff. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? All right, and uh, we also have a blank screen. <laughs> <sighs> Thank heavens for pause or for editing. This is a blooper. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Biff. You're such a poor mess. Look at you. Biff. Filthy, filthy cat. Disgusting. All right, ready? Right. And here we have uh, Barry from Birmingham in the UK.